severe obesity, which was defined as greater than the 99th percentile, has just over tripled in the past 30 years. When it was defined, it was taken from U.S. data from uh, the early 70s, and about 1% of kids were above that value, and now it's just over 4%. So if you think of all the adolescents in the U.S. that are above that criteria uh, who are in need of uh, health services and treatment and prevention and strategies that just are very sparse, it's, it's very concerning. The implications are very similar to those of children who are obese, who are above the 95th percentile, but some of our national data suggests they have even more of the complications that we worry about. So hypertension, high cholesterol, signs of fatty liver disease, uh, signs of menstrual irregularities in teenage girls, uh, sleep apnea, asthma, all these things are, are elevated. And uh, it's rather concerning because it's no longer just the obesity problem, it's obesity with multiple other diseases combined in there. The concern with these children being obese is that they also come from a families of children, of adults who are very obese. And the concern is that it, this morbid obesity or this severe obesity is actually marching into childhood earlier. You know, they probably would have been severely obese uh, as adults, but now it's occurring, you know, in the second decade of life. These children are so severely obese that the prevention strategies have to start really probably at the point of, you know, conception. You know, moms and dads thinking about the healthy lifestyles they're going to have for the rest of their lives, being, you know, having a healthy um, pregnancy and weight gain during pregnancy, breastfeeding as much as possible, uh, and adopting a healthy lifestyle. I'm concerned there's a significant amount of adolescents who are uh, severely overweight and obese in this country, and they are at a stage where prevention isn't so much the point, it's treatment. And to have you know, multidisciplinary, family-oriented treatment options are not that common in this country, and it's even less common that they're paid for. Well, there are new clinical guidelines both for care of children for obesity, but there's also surgical guidelines for considering bariatric surgery in adolescents. And it starts with adolescents who have a BMI of 40 or greater and then severe health conditions. So um, high, con high blood pressure that's poorly controlled, diabetes that's not well controlled, sleep apnea, severe asthma, severe musculoskeletal problems, you know, bone, bone and joint problems, you would consider bariatric surgery. And the reality is that it's over 400,000 children in the U.S. or adolescents uh, in the U.S. actually meet that number.